Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. My dear people of God, we all now know that horrible situation, that terrible incident. You hear that high pitched scream, blood curdling noise, chaos is there. Fear automatically strikes you. You don't know what's going to happen and all of a sudden your heart jumps and so somehow the victim appears at your feet screaming and there's nothing so overwhelming. And you look down and little Jimmy has scraped his knee. The screeching, the screaming, the horrific situation that's there, all of a sudden it's presented to you. There's been nothing worse, no bigger crisis that could ever take place in Jimmy's little world. And what do you do? You immediately run to address the situation. You get that adhesive bandage. You put it on the boo-boo and you cuddle. And all of a sudden the hyperventilation starts to recede. The breathing becomes normal. The tears that are streaming down the face, the redness starts to go away. The calmness, the boo-boo has been attended to. The nurturing, the loving arms, hugging, the kiss. And all of a sudden, that tragedy moments before is quickly forgotten and that dangerous game of play is resumed. We all know what that's like. But when Jimmy's mom relays the story when dad gets home, he looks at the boo-boo and sees the bandage that's on it and asks Jimmy what happens. And dad's a little upset because he sees the adhesive bandage. You see, it's a rip-off. Not the kind you rip off that, yes it is, but it's a CVS adhesive bandage. It's a store brand. It's not the good old Band-Aid. If you really cared about the wound, you would have put a Band-Aid on it because the Band-Aid is the best. You see, we are all sold on brands. And if you get something that happens, you get a cut, you reach for the Band-Aid. It's an adhesive bandage. No matter who sells it, the most popular one that we know is Band-Aid. We go for the best. We go for the brand. We always go for the brand. And today, here we have a story in the gospel about branding. And it's interesting, John comes and tells Jesus about healings that are going on by some stranger in his name. And John has a little bit of a Freudian slip. He says, they're not following us. That's pre-Freud. Pre-Freud. Freud hasn't existed yet, but it's still a Freudian slip. You see, John doesn't get it. You see what happens and what we've been seeing all along. Jesus has told them what we're doing, what's happening, and to follow him. This is what your role is as a disciple. Follow me. And they're worried about status still, and they're looking about their role. John was one at the transfiguration. He thinks he's going to be somebody important. Who's the most important? They still have that mindset. They're not talking about following Jesus, they're talking about others following them. They've got the branding all wrong, and Jesus says, so this person is healing in my name. They're not following us. It might be different. But that's not what the issue is. The Jesus brand is what's important, not what they're doing. And this person, whoever this person is, is healing with the Jesus brand. That's what's important. It's Jesus. And we look at this story and we don't understand what they're healing. But in that time, there were lots of people trying to do exorcisms. They were out there. Any type of illness, mental illness or, or some type of disease, they thought it was demonic. Something you did wrong and they had to exercise what evil was in you. And history tells us that at that time, the Jewish people had good exorcists. And I don't know what the practice was. We know with Jesus laying hands, he could exercise. He had the power of God. But others 
They looked at the Jewish people. They looked at the Gentiles, said the Jewish people were good at exorcisms. So this person, maybe he was an exorcist, a Jewish exorcist, who would go around, and we don't know when they're laying of hands, just like little Jimmy when he fell and got hurt. He was exercised of his pain and suffering and fear because mom not only put that adhesive bandage, the CVS brand, on his boo-boo, she also cuddled him, healed him, laid her hands on her child and brought comfort. The exorcists of those days may have done similar things, the laying of hands, but we also know about the practice of anointing. Maybe during the exorcisms, there was an anointing that took place with oils and things that helped heal whatever illness was there. And they thought that was a powerful thing. We're not sure. But we do know today, we look at brands and we argue over them and don't look what's really important. Is it Coke or Pepsi? What's more important? What brand do you like? Are you an Apple person or do you go with Microsoft? Do you believe the commercials that say Chevy's the best or are you a supporter of Ford? Brands matter to us. And in the church, in our society, brands too matter to many people. But Jesus goes on his gospel message and tells us about the stumbling blocks. He tells us about our teachings. It's the Jesus brand that we're promoting, not other things. And it's the teaching of what it is to be a disciple. And when we sell that brand of Jesus, what we're selling is what he does. Somebody's healing and somebody in Jesus' name is okay because it's healing. Jesus was sent here for the healing of the world. They're all doing what Jesus is proclaiming that God wants. It may not be what we expect done in our style. And as worshipers of Christ, the Jesus brand that we have, we argue and have different views. We are all Christians but we have different churches with different signs, different brands, different traditions. And we fight amongst ourselves saying our way is the best way. We close doors if we don't believe in you. We throw all kinds of fancy titles. And we as Lutherans, we believe certain things that others may not believe in or cherish or promote or believe are priorities in their faith. We believe in the grace of God. That's our main focus. Other faith traditions push other things. They have other things they consider as priorities. But my brothers and sisters in Christ, regardless of the house of worship you go to, it's the Jesus brand. We here are a traditional mainline Protestant church. We have our heritage. We are big on liturgy. That's what we do. And if that welcomes you, and that is a brand that you enjoy, that you have the experience and love and feel the comfort of Christ, God bless you. But others get that comfort in other situations, other settings, other backgrounds, other cultures. That doesn't mean they're less Christian than us. They too carry the Jesus brand. We give thanks to the Lord for the one true unified church, the one holy Catholic apostolic church that we confess that we belong to. And we can be critical of our own brand, our Lutheranism. And I have been known to be critical of our own church body, some of the things that they stress and say important. I stress and promote the Jesus brand. While other Lutheran bodies and other leadership say, the stress and priorities may be social issues. Yes, they are important. But the bottom line is Jesus is the brand. And don't let the stumbling blocks of other issues and other practices get in the way. We may not all look at it the same way, but the most important thing is the Jesus brand. And my brothers and sisters in Christ, as we leave today and we mingle with others of different faith traditions, Roman Catholics, Methodists, Episcopalians, United Church of Christ, Seventh-day Adventists, whatever they may be, understand we are all 
under the same brand, the Jesus brand. Let us give thanks to our Savior, the one who came to heal. And do not let any stumbling blocks get in our way of our love of Christ. I hope none of you suffer any tragedies of boo-boos. And if you use a Band-Aid, CVS, or whatever brand, know the healing presence of Jesus, the ultimate brand, is with you always. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.